Upheaval. Breaking Point. Chapter 12. Recovery. For those who survived the fall of Fangbreaker Fortress, the long retreat towards Bastion City was the most draining, oppressive journey they had ever taken. The distance itself was not great, neither was the speed that they were traversing it, as the Wolven had not given chase. What sapped their strength was the weight of defeat that hung over them like a dark cloud that seemed to blot out even the stars above them. Eventually, the orders were passed out to stop for the night. They had put a good enough distance between themselves and the fortress, and they needed to rest before the long trek to Bastion City. Sentries were quickly posted, while several ponies collapsed in sheer exhaustion. Even as the survivors set up camps, there were still pegasi flying from the fortress, carrying wounded. The surviving ponies were beginning to feel effects of their sudden exertions. Everything was a flurry of activity when they had been under attack. What had started out as a tense vigil as the fortress saw the great horde of Wolven assembling quickly turned into a confused and desperate battle to escape. It all started when a massive explosion shattered the innermost gates. When legionnaires came running to respond, all they saw was a thick bank of black smoke rolling from the courtyard towards the second gates. Another explosion followed, and then two pairs of gates had been reduced to blazing wreckage. That was when every pony flung what they could at the smoke. Spells, arrows, a few even charged in. Nothing had worked, and those who had run into the smoke never came out. When the outer gates collapsed into a burning ruin, the Wolven immediately charged in. What followed soon after was carnage that would haunt those who survived it for a long time. It was only when the survivors had distanced themselves from the fortress did the implications of what had just happened begun to sink in. They had lost the fortress. Who knew how many of them died trying to hold it long enough for them to retreat? With Fangbreaker in the possession, the Wolven had a foothold into Equestria itself. It could very well mean the slow splitting apart of the northern front at the seams, and it exposed Bastion City to a direct attack. It wasn't just the present situation that weighed heavily on the survivors. The Legion had defended Fangbreaker for more than a thousand years. Generation after generation of their ancestors had proudly kept the Wolven at bay through its walls, and it was their generation that had failed. More than a few ponies were beginning to wonder if death in Fangbreaker's defense was a better fate than facing the shame of losing it. With all these things troubling the survivors, it was no surprise that no pony paid much heed to the group of ponies that had just joined them. If they had, it would have been a strange sight indeed. Among the legionnaires walked five chosen ponies, led by a soldier who had just recently been reported dead. Once they moved past the sentries, Vanguard looked behind him. Twilight Sparkle's friends looked completely exhausted, not just physically as well. The reality of the situation they had found themselves in was beginning to catch up with them. I'd advise you all to get some rest, but I doubt any of you will until you've seen how Twilight is doing, he told them. So let's get to the medics first. They nodded obligingly, more out of necessity than anything else, Vanguard realized. They had just survived a battle against monsters that they had no idea existed. They were lost and surrounded by strangers in a land that was thousands of miles from anywhere they knew. He was the only pony around that they could remotely trust. They were holding up well, however. Perhaps concern for their injured friend managed to blot out their other worries. He was worried as well. He looked around to see where the medics had set up. All he had to look for was where the squads of Pegasi were carrying their stretchers to. Sure enough, he found the makeshift ward close to the center of the camp. When they got there, they found themselves staring at a veritable sea of stretchers and makeshift beds. Moans and cries of pain mixed with orders being shouted as a small group of ponies in white coats moved from one injured pony after another. The air smelled strongly of blood, burned flesh, and, strangely enough, brandy. Vanguard listened closely to the orders being shouted out, and then turned towards Twilight's friends. Looks like Red Brand made it out alive, he said. Try not to get under hoof, or he'll kick you out of the camp. They searched the ward for Twilight, while staying clear of the medics who were rushing about. Finally, they spotted her near the edge of the ward. Spike had also noticed them, and was waving both claws in the air. About time you got here, Spike said as they came closer. I was starting to think something bad happened to you on the way. How's Twilight? Vanguard asked. I'll be fine, came a weak reply. Twilight lay on a makeshift bed, which was barely more than a thin piece of canvas spread over the ground. Her shoulder had been tightly wrapped in bandages. Her friends quickly surrounded her in concern. You sure you're all right? Applejack asked. 
was so worried, Pinky added. I'm all right, Twilight replied. I'm sorry I made you all worry. You're darn right you made us worry, Applejack said. Just what were you thinking jumping in front of those monsters, girl? You gotta admit, it was pretty cool, Rainbow Dash said. Cool and stupid, Applejack retorted. You better not be thinking of trying it out, Rainbow. She can't, Pinky interrupted. She can't make things float. While Twilight reunited with her friends, Vanguard turned his attention to Spike. How did things go when you got here? He asked. Did her cutie mark cause some trouble? No, Spike replied. The doctor yelled at Twilight for getting hurt, though. When he found out who bandaged her, he yelled at me. Then he yelled at one of his assistants for using too much bandages when they replaced the ones I put. He only yelled at you? Vanguard replied. He's in a surprisingly good mood after all this. Watching her friends brought a smile to Twilight's lips. Despite the guilt for having dragged them into exile with her, she was glad that they were here. She suddenly doubted her ability to endure the crushing loneliness of surviving in the barrier lands by herself. There was one more person she felt she could count on, though. She looked past her friends and looked directly at the black barded stallion who stayed at the edge of the circle they formed. Looks like I owe you my life again, she told him. Do you? Vanguard asked. He approached Twilight, her friends parting to let him see her. A little confused by the response, Twilight nodded and tried to muster a smile. Yes, she said. Her eyes narrowed with concern, however, as she looked at Vanguard. Are you all right? she asked. You look like you're about to collapse. Then set my mind at ease so I can rest, Twilight Sparkle, Vanguard replied. Why have you come back to this place? The smile disappeared from Twilight's face, and she cast her gaze downwards. Come back to this place? Applejack asked. You mean you've been here before? When I disappeared the last time, I ended up in this place, Twilight said. She faced Vanguard as she continued. I broke Prince Dorado's memory lock spell. Once I remembered, I tried to talk to Princess Celestia about telling every pony the truth about the barrier lands. Her voice lowered as she remembered the painful encounter. She refused and asked me to go through another memory lock. When I refused, she banished me. And then we went along with her, Rainbow Dash added. There was no way we were letting Twilight be banished by herself. The answer all but knocked the breath from Vanguard. Then his legs finally gave way, forcing him to fall to his knees. You idiot, he said softly. Why would you do such a thing? Concerned, Spike tried to support him as he fell but the weight of a heavily barded pony was too much for a baby dragon. Twilight's eyes widened in surprise first, and then in indignation. What? she asked. It was the right thing to do. Isn't that why you gave me that emblem? So that's where it came from, Spike muttered. Thinking that Vanguard was having trouble breathing, he tried to undo some of the latches that kept the barding around the stallion's head in place. The piece of barding fell to the ground, revealing Vanguard's face. As Twilight had guessed, he had a gray coat and a black mane, with curls that fell just past his eyebrows. His eyes were a strange sight. They were slit and so brightly red that they seemed to glow in the dark. She couldn't help but notice the bandages wrapped around his head, which covered a portion of his lower jaw and neck. You're hurt, she said softly. I gave you that emblem so you, at least, would remember, Vanguard said. That was all. Princess Celestia has had more than a thousand years to entrench herself in her position. Did you really think you could move her by talking? A little angry, Twilight raised her voice slightly. It wasn't a matter of whether I could make her change her mind, she said. Some ponies still had to say something. I thought that you'd appreciate that I still tried. Your life has been ruined, Twilight Sparkle, and I'm to blame. I miss the part where I should be jumping with joy. Don't martyr yourself. Twilight snapped. She refused to meet Vanguard's gaze. I had plenty of chances to walk away, but I didn't. I'm here because I choose to be here. With that, both of them became silent. After a few more awkward moments, Rarity cleared her throat to speak. Well, she said, there's really nothing to be done about that. What's done is done. Perhaps we should stop thinking about what's going to happen to us now. Vanguard gave Twilight one more look and sighed before turning his attention to her friends. The barrier lands are your home now, he told them. You might have noticed that it's under attack. I suggest that you help defend it. 
they were quiet once more. As if on cue, they heard the long, dolorous howls of the woven coming from the distant fortress, reminding them of things to be done. Has anyone seen Fluttershy? Pinky suddenly asked. All of them looked around in alarm. The yellow pegasus was indeed gone. Seeing that Twilight Sparkle was fine brought a great deal of much-needed relief to Fluttershy. Everything had been going so terribly today. Being banished, watching her friend get hurt, seeing ponies... die? It was almost more than she could bear. Coming through! Some pony called out. Fluttershy edged closer to her friends as a pair of pegasi carrying a stretcher between them flew past her. Another pegasus was laying back first on the stretcher, moaning in agony while he raised a badly bent foreleg in the air. Oh my, she said, already sharing the injured pony's distress. She flew over to take a closer look. What happened to him? One of the pegasi who were carrying the stretcher looked at her inquisitively, as if trying to recognize her. When he couldn't, he answered anyway. Wolven Bolter clipped one of his wings, ma'am. He just crashed outside the fort. He's lucky we found him. Moved by concern, Fluttershy moved over to the injured pony. His leg had been bent in an unnatural position, and the bone had snapped. It would have to be properly set, and then placed in a splint if he was ever going to use it again. She looked around her and spotted a roll of bandages that had fallen to the ground. No one seemed to notice it, just as no one seemed to notice the newly arrived patient. The ponies running the ward were clearly understaffed and swamped with work. If she didn't help this pony, he would probably have to wait for a while with his broken leg. Do you have something we can use for a splint? She asked the two pegasi. Uh, you can use this leather sheath, one of them offered. I was going to have it replaced anyway. It's a bit worn. He unfastened a short blade from his harness and unsheathed it, offering the sheath to Fluttershy. The leather casing was just long and hard enough to be useful. Fluttershy went to work immediately. This is going to hurt a little, okay? She told the injured Pegasus soothingly. He nodded in response and grit his teeth as she set the bone in place. Once that was done, she put the splint in place and wrapped the leg carefully. We'll just set him over there, one of the Pegasus carriers said. They flew the newly bandaged pony over to the long line of laid-out patients. Pleased with her success, Fluttershy was about to rejoin her friends when she heard someone shouting, You there! Pink mine! Get over here! Fluttershy looked around to see who was yelling. One of the ponies working in the ward was looking straight at her and shouting. She pointed to herself and looked at him curiously, silently asking if he meant her. Yes, you! The pony shouted. Get your ridiculously flowery mane over here! Fluttershy flew over obediently. The pony who had been calling for her was a dark brown earth pony with a very dark blue mane that he kept slick and brushed up so that it stuck to his neck and out of his face. He was standing next to another pegasus who was laid up on the ground. To Fluttershy's horror, what appeared to be a large piece of wood was sticking out of the pegasus's flank. Blood oozed from the wound even as she stared at it. She tore her eyes away from the injury and then faced the pony who had called for her. Y yes she asked. I'm going to pull that bolt out, the pony said. You'll see that piece of metal I've been heating over there. He pointed to a small fire nearby. One end of a long rectangular bar of metal had been placed over it. Take the heated end and cauterize the wound before he bleeds out. C cauterize she asked. Yes, cauterize. I'll need you to do it while I hold him down. The idiot's a real bucker, and he'll go nuts once he feels his flank is on fire. Take the brand and burn the wound shut before he fountains his life before you. Are you ready? He put a hoof over the bolt and looked at her. N no Fluttershy squeaked as she tried to slowly back out. That brand is gonna stick to his flank or it's going up yours, Philly, the pony snarled. He's gonna die while you stutter, so move it. Fluttershy nearly bolted at the threat. Blinking away tears, she went over to the brand and picked up the cold end with her mouth. Then she walked over towards the injured pony, while the brown pony held him down. As soon as she approached, the brown pony grabbed hold of the bolt and pulled it out. Blood immediately spurted from the wound, and the injured pony grunted in pain. Fluttershy could feel her stomach violently protest. The brand wobbled in her mouth while she desperately tried to keep it together. Do it! Fluttershy suppressed the urge to close her eyes and miss as she stuck the white-hot end to the wound. The blood around the wound immediately sizzled. The injured Pegasus began to struggle violently while the brown pony held him down. Keep it in there until you smell him roasting, pink mane, the brown pony shouted. As soon as the awful stench of burned flesh hit Fluttershy's nostrils, she let the brand go. The piece of metal fell to the ground with a clatter. 
the brown pony let go of the Pegasus, who collapsed on his belly, to pick the brand up. Don't waste the heated brand, Pink Mane, he said. We might have more cauterizing to do. Bandages are almost gone. I'm gonna get you for lighting my flank on fire, Philly, the Pegasus grumbled. The brown pony smacked the Pegasus' head with a hoof. Shut the hay up, updraft, he shouted. You wouldn't be here if you weren't parading your giant flank for the wolven to shoot at. Can I at least get a mouthful from that flask you got there? Updraft asked weakly. You just threatened one of my assistants, Featherhead. I wouldn't give you my piss in a cup. Still grumbling, the Pegasus settled down. The brown pony turned his attention towards Fluttershy. Name's Redbrand, he said. I lead Fangbreaker's medical staff. Or what's left of it, anyway. Who in the hay are you? My... my name's Fluttershy. Speak up, you wildflower. I can't hear you over all the moaning. It's Fluttershy. Fluttershy tried more assertively. Take this kit, then, Fluttershy, Redbrand said as he handed a small suitcase to her. We've got a long night ahead of us. As the night went on, the medical ward eventually settled down. The squads of Pegasi stopped flying in, and the injured stopped moaning and settled down to sleep. Amidst the injured, two ponies were laid up next to each other. With her bound-up shoulder, Twilight Sparkle stared up to the sky, studying the stars that she had just realized were the same as the ones in Equestria proper. Spike was nestled against her, dozing away. A foot away from her was Vanguard Clash. His armor had been completely removed, revealing the extent of his injuries. His entire torso was wrapped in bandages. Twilight wondered how he even managed to stay standing for so long. One of the medics had removed the bandages to see what had happened, giving Twilight a view of burned patches all along one side of his coat. So, what happened to you? Twilight asked. She avoided looking at Vanguard as she did so. She was still a little cross at him for calling her an idiot. Pyre and I got into a little disagreement about me giving you my emblem, Vanguard replied. The burns came with her witty rebuttal. Shocked, Twilight looked at Vanguard to see if he was just joking. Vanguard's face was completely serious, however. The image of an angry pyre valor hurling a fireball came to her mind. But would even the combative unicorn attack her own captain? It's my fault, then, she said. I'm sorry. Don't martyr yourself. The two of them fell silent for some time. Twilight looked past the medical ward and saw her friends huddled together at a distance. They had found Fluttershy after some searching, and when they saw her helping out in the ward, they decided to leave her be, especially since the pony in charge was constantly yelling and looked like he would kick their faces off if they bothered anyone who was working in the ward. Twilight, Vanguard finally said. What is it? Twilight asked. I'm sorry that you and your friends have been banished and that your return here is just in time to see the start of the worst crisis the Northern Legion's faced for hundreds of years. I've already told you, that's... But I am glad to see you again. Twilight hid a smile and settled for stargazing once more. Let's just get some sleep, she said. The night would be over soon, she realized, and tomorrow would mark her first day as part of the Barrier Lands. <laughs>